did you ever like go up to your dad and were you like i forgive you and yeah, 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 you're saying so. So I discovered the mental health course, and it talks about gratitude, and yeah. the, this was the thing that changed it all for me. At least for my relationship with my father, the, the most beneficial thing I've done is meditation, and that you know how I said the dissociation, like that got cured for me with meditation. But with gratitude, that was the thing that uh, resolved my family issues, at least on my side. That um, it, this lecturer in this online course, she gave out this task to journal about some things that you're grateful for. And eventually I took like another course that said, oh, you know, like another form of gratitude practice is to write a letter of gratitude to someone and to specifically try and do it to someone that you have some problems with. So I chose my father and I'm sat there with an empty page, hating him, swearing at him in my mind, thinking, no, what, like, what have I got to be grateful yeah. for? Do you know what I mean? It, like he, he abused me, he was violent towards me. He was violent towards my brother, my sister, my mom. I've hated him my entire life. Never once thought a positive thought about him, but then doing this practice with this empty page in front of me and then I started to write, okay, you know what? I've just started to work full-time jobs. I'm 23 years old at this point, I'm 25 now. And working full-time sucks, bro, especially for a job that you don't want. So I'm, yeah. I'm thinking, wait, my father's worked more than full-time, like two jobs most of his life to yeah. provide for us. My mother is a housewife, so she doesn't she work. It's very traditional. Well, okay. He's, he's putting in work, so I'm grateful that he's worked so hard. And then, you know, I, I start to like, I don't know where this came from, but I start to see the privilege that I've had that I grew up in the UK. Yeah. And um, I've went to good schools, I've, I've graduated with a psychology degree. My brother's graduated. graduated. Yeah. yeah. Brother's gradu graduated with medicine. He makes wow. a lot of money. My sister graduated with politics. Wow. And I start to think, wait, my dad always said this, like his goal was to get his children through a British education. It was always the reason why we moved to the UK. And I think, wait, he accomplished that. I'm, that's all right. Okay, I'm grateful that we got a British education. Because I started to wonder, okay, where would I actually, you know, I, I never felt grateful for being in the UK. Oh, the weather's, you know, you focus, you oh, the weather's bad. Yeah. yeah. But then I started to think, wait, where would I be right now? If I didn't go there, if I was still in Pakistan and you know my English was twenty percent worse than it is, and you know all, all of this stuff, and I started the to think, wait, opportunities, the you know the network, network, even like culture, yeah, even like uh, social media and like just technology as well. It's not as advanced, and yeah, totally. And the education is probably the, the biggest part of it, at least in my perception. And um, yeah. specifically, I thought this story that my dad told me, which was that to get us into the UK. It was extremely difficult. You know, like I started to think, okay, how did he actually manage? So we were born in Pakistan. We didn't have visas or yeah, passports yeah, yeah, or anything. Yeah. So how do we go from the there to the, you know what I mean? And then I, I messaged them once and I'm grateful that you brought us to the UK. So many yeah. opportunities. And I don't ever talk like that to my dad, right? And yeah. he replied back with like 20 messages. Wow. And the first message he, he wrote back was, in Pakistan, I had 500 men working below me who called me sir. And I had high status, a really good job that I liked. In the UK, I've worked as a laborer for 20 years. Mm. He works as a taxi driver. He's been beaten up by people who get in, the racist guys get in the taxi drunk, they beat him up. And so, so every now and then, like every six months, he comes yeah. home with like bloodied up face and shit. Yeah. He's worked in a corner store, same thing. You see the worst of British society when the guys are coming in to, to buy alcohol. They, they don't have ID, they're 17 years old, so they start throwing shit on the floor. I remember I used to go to the corner store sometimes to like, you know, help my dad with some things and spend time there. And people like older guys from my school or something would come in and be racist. Oh, you yeah. smell like curry, you know, he's seeing this shit. And like, you know, it only just hit me. It's like, why was he working the sacrifices? These... Yeah, you know, you, you don't really, like, at least I for a long time didn't really think, why is he here? Yeah. Well, because of me, it's not like he wants to work this job. He's here because of me. And then, you know, I've, like, I'm getting really emotional messaging him. And he tells me the story of how he actually got the visas for us, where he had to travel, like, you know, to a, a way different city in um, in Pakistan. And it, it's he said it was like amongst the mountains. And to get to the visa embassy, it took a few hours. And then you had to, it was open at seven and only a few people could get in. So you had to line up for hours beforehand. He went oh like three goodness. times, wasn't able to get Jeez. inside. That kind of it's stuff always struggle. like agitates me, you know, yeah, like if there's something you've got to do and you can't get in and you've got to go again and again and again. So I mean? And imagine doing that. There's no, there's no organization. You, you don't even know what you're doing. Before the internet, time. bro. This yeah. is before Google Maps or anything. And you know, yeah. oh, okay, they open at seven. It's like you're just told by a friend, oh, yeah, they open at seven today yeah, or something. Damn. And he told this story, which I told Sam recently, that he would line up amongst all these guys to try and get in. And he would always see richer, more successful people drive up with their drivers around 6.55 get out and then trade places with their servants who had been waiting uh, for them. Essentially they had outsourced yeah, the position the, in the, the line. Yeah. And like, you know, my dad would see it and everything. 
he eventually gets here and gets like a six month visa, but he wanted a three year one. And you know, like he like argues with them and everything, eventually gets the visa, then eventually travels to the UK, sees that it's good there, you know, organizes it all. And I'm like- And you had no family in UK before. So he's, nothing, just, nothing. he's just thinking about this place, like a fan like UK and he doesn't know what's gonna be there. And he's like, I need to go there. Just a massive risk. Massive. Leaving all his, like all his generations have just been there, his forefathers and in Pakistan. And everyone's probably looking at him like, why are you going to UK or, you know, what are you doing? This, the status, it's interesting we spoke about status before this because the status hit that he took for me, because he, he was really well up in, in Pakistan, you know, literally guys calling him sir. He, he was high up in a paper mill as an engineer and everything. Mm. And in the UK, he's a taxi driver. Damn, yeah. He took that status hit for me, for my brother, for my sister, so that we could have a good education. And for the first time ever, so I'm writing all this down, writing the gratitude letter, for the first time ever, I'm seeing the positive sides to him. Mm. And that changed my perspective completely, especially because I was working a really like low end, full-time job. I was working in customer service. So I hated my life and felt. everything. I, I only knew how it felt for a couple a of months. Bit, yeah. You know, he had done this for 20 years and I was only working full-time. He was working 60 to 70 hours and stuff, right? Yeah. And so eventually I did, I moved back. So this was, a, I was, you know, in a different city at this point. I eventually moved back home and then I write him a formal letter. I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful that you did this. And um, it's, it feels cringe, it feels awkward, but I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to read it to him. So I, I hear him coming up the stairs. I tell him, come here, sit him down. He, it's already, oh, we don't do this stuff, right? This is cringe yeah. and weird for us, right? Like, but I sit him I down. I mean, I don't mean it's cringe, but I know I can understand this might be so hard. Don't, you, with, you know, usually with dads, you don't really have this kind of, like with my mom, I can open up a bit more. And, but with dads, it's a bit like you feel like you want to be a man and you don't want to. It's, it's not like, emotional. I mean, in some levels it's that, but it's also just like, you know, it's totally out of character for yeah. us. You know, me and, me and my dad have always been a very logical, just like, okay, objective focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, how are you? You're good, not sick. Money okay, food okay, okay, You're goodbye. Fine. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, how we yeah. talk, right? So when I did sit him down, I said both of us looked uncomfortable and I start to read him <laughs> and I just, you know, I say, oh, I wrote something for you. It just feels cringe yeah. and I start reading it. And you know, I'm, I'm yeah. grateful that you brought us to the UK. I'm grateful that you've worked so so long so hard for us yeah. i'm grateful that you've provided as, as a father with you know a housewife as well who's not making money or anything as a one man i'm grateful that you've taken jobs that you've probably haven't even liked just for us mm -hmm. and i yeah. begin like you know tearing down and he's tear like tearing up Damn. a bit as well and i give him the letter and it's it's all okay right then um so that's that's how it, like you know our relationship yeah, yeah, changed was, but one extra was... part of this story is that like about two years later so just a few months ago I mentioned it on a video, this, this story. And um, I mentioned it again to my dad. Oh, you know, I just told that story. And he like gets really happy and he just opens up his wallet and no. it's in there. And that, when was that two years later? Yeah. No 